here. So we're going to start working on this. We're going to uh, pretty it up. And uh, the only thing I did to it was I put a little bit of a little bit of oil on the wood because I was taking it out in the weather. And so um, I got a few more things to do here. So anyway, get your cup of coffee. Oh, look at here, huh? <laughs> I got mine here. And uh, we're going to touch some of this up. If you guys remember, this stalk here started out as a big, gaudy target stalk of the day. And it hadn't been, uh, it hadn't, didn't have all the, it wasn't cut to fit or anything. I had to fit it. But uh, I changed the whole appearance of this stock uh, in an attempt to get it to look more like a Gimmer or a Hawken type stock. So there's a few things that need to be touched up on this wood before I throw a final coat of oil on. And I got to match this up here. See, right there is a bump. I'm going to match this up so that when I brown this and put it back on, it'll be nice. Um, and then here, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Maybe you guys can throw me some kind of a... This was, this was just the square end of the wood where I cut it. This was just a block of wood that I started with. And I don't, I don't really want to put one of them fancy uh, swirly things that they put on. I may just round it off. I don't know. And it doesn't look bad square, but I might round that off a little. And uh, then we're going to start polishing the sights and the barrel. And this will be almost done. And we'll put some brown on it and we'll see what she looks like. And we'll put more stain on the wood and it'll be, be a good little work rifle. So, anyway, that's what we're working on today. Probably won't finish it this morning, but we're going to get a good start on it. So, I'm going to do a little more sand in here. So, get your coffee and everything together. And So, I almost got this where I want it now. I, I just had to get this tightened up. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do this in two shows. Uh, the first show, there's two ways that I brown stuff. <clears throat> when I got when I'm doing a whole barrel or barrel to action or whatever, I put it in the barrel oven. I've got an oven that's long enough that it'll take a really long barrel, and I'll heat it up to the. I can regulate the temperature with that. You want to get it around 300 degrees, you know, ish, maybe a little less. Uh, for the bluing to sizzle, you know, browning I guess. When you put that brown on there, you want the metal to be just hot enough that it sizzles a little bit and then dries. Well, I can do the, I can get the whole barrel that hot in that oven and then work it and then in and out of the oven until it's done. The small parts, like the sight or this butt plate, I can heat it up with a torch, propane torch because it's not a lot of metal and for very little pro propane I can get it warm enough to where it'll sizzle. So the first thing, two things we're going to do is this butt plate and uh, the sight. Oh and I guess we got we got the key and the uh, and the Stushkins we'll do and uh, we'll do those using the torch and uh, then when we get to the point where we're going to do this barrel We'll do that in the oven, um, so you'll see the two different ways I do it. And I ain't telling you which way is right or wrong, and nor if either of the ways I do it are right or wrong. It's just the way I do it. And the thing about putting it in the oven is I'm going to want, I mean, I want it kind of a good charcoal brown, but I also want a little modeling in it so it looks like it's starting to wear. It's been there a while. So I can control that a little better. Um, in the oven getting the whole thing uh, when you do the barrel with the torch which I've done and it's real tedious you can only heat a certain like an inch of the barrel and then hit it with that and it takes a long time to get down here and it's hard to get that model book whereas I can work with a whole side all the way down um, at one time putting it in the oven and then I can actually see what I'm doing so that's the way we're going to do it. The action, we're going to leave that the way it is. I kind of kind of did make a little bit of a mistake um, trying to line this up. I, I got a few sandpaper marks on the action and at the time I started doing that I thought I was going to just refinish the action 
and I've changed my mind and changed the type of finish so I'm gonna have to figure out a way of buffing those out and not ruining the finish I want this to look like this gun I mean I'm not trying to fool anybody but I want this gun to look like it survived in one piece from when this action was new so and then I, I as we're working on it, we're going to do the wood, and I'm going to figure out something to do with the front of this. So, so anyway, while okay. I was doing this, I went ahead and I had to take off these two side plates. These two Estuskins got to be um, round too. So I went ahead and rounded this off and, and tucked it down like that and uh, gave this a little bit of a, a going over. Like I said, I didn't really finish sand it because... I was taking it. Uh, I was taking it hunting. I just put a little bit of oil on it to keep it safe. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on this and uh, let it dry. And then we'll. Uh, I've got the sight sanded and polished, and uh, and I got. Then the barrel. Well, we're going to do the barrel on a different tape but the barrel needs polish but I'm gonna get these I'm almost ready to uh, I'm almost ready to do the uh, butt plate in the in the site the sky skins and what else are we doing in the site so this wood is this is really pretty wood when you Put a little stain on it. I'm not gonna. It's not gonna be a shiny finish. I'm gonna hit it about two or three times and uh, hit in between with uh, steel wool until I get a good coat. But it's also gonna be a good coat, and it's gonna be um, dull finish. I'm I'm not much for those glossy glass finish things so okay so we get our stuff together we got our plum brown our stuff uh, I use a swab like this I got some water for dunking something for holding it now these I will do these like right here now what I'll do is I'll set these tiny parts here and uh, I'll get you zoomed in and we'll heat them up and we'll get them to go in there yeah okay sorry about this but I gotta get it to where it'll focus okay so we got our torch like I say these I just do with a torch because I can get it hot enough quick and uh, what I want to show you how hot these get hot fast so be careful you don't want it too if you get it too hot it won't work so you need to touch it touch it with this you see how it sizzles there you go and then I'll hit them again so it sizzles get, get it too hot it'll uh what it'll actually start to do is uh, change the hardness of the metal. It'll like turn, start turning purple, and uh, it does that. It'll never, um, it'll never brown. Now see, these have see how it's like all. It looks like it's really rusted and been laying out, but we'll wash that off, and there'll be some brown underneath it and look, let's do it so you go and put it in there cools it off and it washes it and then it'll you'll see what there we go kind of see what and this i want these to be a little modeled i don't want them to be a pure hard brown but this one's going to need again and i'll show you why now you can see where it's kind of modeled out a little bit let it focus this just needs another coat is all that's wrong with this. We'll just heat it again and hit it again and it'll get darker. Okay. This is, that's not hot anymore. So we might as well do this. 
we'll hit it again and it'll get a little darker and then that'll be good okay so these are about the color I want them and so what I'll do is I'll hit them uh, one more time heat it and bam and then before the last time you don't card it I don't card it off I only card it off so I can see where I'm at color wise um, once I think it's where I want it to be I won't card it off you let that stay on there until it cools and is dry and then you wash it off and then get all the acid out by washing it off and you could even wash it in a little baking soda water if you want to I've never had to and then you oil the hell out of it and let the oil go soak back into the metal um, oh and I leave the screws in there not because I'm lazy but it lifts them off of the this base piece of aluminum and if you lay it flat on an aluminum it won't get hot enough to sizzle because the aluminum heat sinks it but if you uh, put the screws in and hold it up you get your screws browned at the same time and uh, they get hot because they're not sitting there getting heat sunk into this uh, into this aluminum okay so now I'm working on the site and uh, probably help to wear gloves the bigger parts, these don't sizzle and throw off as much gas as they get. Start to get a little hot. Um, these don't sizzle and throw off that much gas. But the gas that you're throwing off, this spume, is acid. It's acid rain, man. So make sure that you have ventilation or a mask. And like I say, these don't throw off so much right off. So I don't really concern myself with it. Um, but when, you, when I'm doing a barrel and there's a lot of it, I usually wear a mask. Um, well, here we go. Let's give this two shots. Still sizzling. I don't care so much about the parts that don't show. There we go. So, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, see it's getting to be about right. You do it one more just to fill it in. And then we'll spin around and do the other side. Again, these thin parts get hot really fast. You gotta be careful. It's going to be okay. So we'll turn that around. This one I can hang over here, see? I don't know, it might burn my bench a little if I'm not careful. Oh, you got to get the other side. If it gets so hot that your fingers can't hold it, then, you know, that far away from the... the then what you're going to end up doing is getting it too hot. See. And like I say, if you get it too hot, it'll actually heat treat the metal and you won't get the desired result. So, we get this one done and then what do we got? Oh, well, I got a couple of screws and the uh, butt plate. Now, I went ahead and used this rifle before it was finished. And I use my guns, so it got some. It got some. Uh, they got some little nicks in the stock and a few scratches here and there. Get pulling in and out of the car, and so I'm leaving them in there because this is not a. Okay, I'm not one of these artists that produces these perfect rifles and a piece of art. And all, I'm just not that quality of person. I, just, I can't do it, so I don't try. Okay, I make my guns to look like they've been used all their life, especially the antique ones. And so that's where I'm headed with stuff. So I leave some scratches. I leave a couple of tool marks, not a lot, not, not messy or, or anything like that, but I leave a little bit of that to look like this gun's been around. It was made in a shop that didn't have 400 different types of grits of sandpaper it was made in the shop that just had files or or it was taken out and used in the mountains and it's been there for a while but hasn't been destroyed yet that's how I make my guns so 
I'm going to finish this site. We'll do this. I, I saved this for last because now that you know what to look for, you'll actually see it happen here. Okay, this so this is big enough you can't eat the whole thing. So it has to be done in, in stages. So I always start with this top part. Uh, on your muzzle loaders, this back part, because it's a muzzle loader and you're going to be, you know, putting it on the ground when you're beating it and stuff, you're going to beat it up pretty good. Um, but this part here should stay pretty good. See how it bubbles? And that's what you want, right about that. That's about 280, 300 degrees, that metal. Uh, like I say, if you get it much more than that, it's, uh, it's going to uh, it's gonna heat treat the metal and if it turns blue, that's not too bad because that's still a springy type steel thing, so it won't be brittle, but it won't take a, if you're going for a fire blue finish, that's okay, but it will not take a rust brown after you get it there. So, so you can see how it gets rough, and then you have to card that off. That lets, lets it rust. And then you got to card that off. Let's see, make sure. And we'll do it in the water, get it to the color we want, and then we oil the oil the hell out of it. We'll throw a bunch of oil on it, get oil back into the metal, and that'll kind of cure it. Alright, we're gonna do this side next. So it's not too hot. Okay, let's go here. It's kind of a good, it's a really good finish. I mean, if you don't finish it, it's going to rust brown anyway, so it's really going to do the same thing. Um, and then, of course, if you oil it, it's going to keep it kind of, kind of the same. There we go, look at that. That's almost a little too hot. That puts it right in there. There is a spot there to see. Sometimes the steel you use is such junk, it'll have a spot where it won't. But if you keep doing blue something, you keep after it, it'll fill it just I like get this on there. Very liberal. I want it to be, a, you know, I want to be a, there to be enough on there that it can soak in uh, to the metal. And so just put a lot of it on there like so it looks wet. I want it to look wet. Let's see, there's a spot there. Doesn't look wet, so we'll put a little oil in there. Yep, that there. And then these screw heads. Okay. And that screw head here, a little bit of oil in there. Alright, this part of this site. This is the ladder. That's got to have a little bit there. Okay, and then these things. They kind of, they, these are thin and they kind of got a little bit of a little bit too hot, but they're, they're going to look okay in there. They'll be brown. They'll look brown. Now this, this back piece here, it, it's a little bit, I let it, I didn't get it full dark brown because if this gun has been used out in the mountains, this is going to have some wear from being right, in your shoulder. So, so here's I got that plate. antique kind of the way I want. And uh, you can see where I kind of modeled it a little bit. You know, model it out, but um, along the where it hits your shoulder. So anyway, I've got that, and then a little further forward, those things, this Duskins, they're uh, they're in there. That one's a little deeper in the wood than I would have liked it, but you know what? That's okay. So anyway, now, um, the only thing is you can see I didn't do the key because <laughs> I left it there and forgot to bring it over with the pile. And of course, the sights are done, but we're going to do the barrel, so I didn't put them on. Um, what we're going to do, I'll probably just go ahead and do that key when I do the barrel. But anyway, so let's get back to life here. Anyway. Uh, that stuff's pretty good. Just read the instructions and uh, 
that are on. It's pretty simple. The, the heat thing's a pain in the ass. When we do the barrel, um, you'll see why the oven works out better. So, thanks for joining me for a cup of coffee, man. I really en enjoyed that. I'm going to uh, start working on this other barrel, so the next episode we'll do the barrel. You'll see how, how I do it, and I don't know if I'm doing it right. They come out the way I want them to look, so. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining me, and you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.